And, and so we're going to play a game of dope or no. <laughs> Big Perk, you are my fashion consultant. Well, I don't uh, know why, but come on. <laughs> we'll take a look at this one. This was Grady Dick. Um, he's from Kansas. This was Wizard of Oz inspired. Is this dope or no? It, it is, it's very dope. You know it why? Is? Because he's probably the only person that could pull that off. And he Is he pulling that. that off? Yeah, he pulled it off because no one had a complaint about it. Everybody was Well, like, I, 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 you weren't in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the building, no one did. It's the shades with it. It's the swag. Like, you got to have a certain level of confidence to walk up into the draft like that. And this kid is just amazing. Well, he's got some swagger. Uh, look, how about Scoot Henderson? He's got the chain. He's got I, the grill working. What do you think? You know what? At first, I wasn't feeling his outfit until he told me what it actually meant. It was, you know, all the, the rubies and the crystals is, you know, basically the colors of his family. And so he wanted to put wear them on his shoulders and his jacket. I understand that. A little bit of too many pieces. I mean, I think he had like six chains on. Mm. I don't mind the grill because I'm from Texas, so I understand the little grill part of it. Uh, you know, the pinky ring, I mean, it's part of the sweat. I, I, I couldn't do it. Okay, well, then, then how about, could you do this one? Could you do Marty Smith last night in San Antonio? Uh, what, what did we, <laughs> did you see this, Big Perk? What'd you make of this? You, I mean, typical, this is what they do in San Antonio, but it's bad. You want to know why? He's got Victor Wembanyama in his head. I see that. That's great. That's, that's great. great? Yeah, that's great. That's. I mean, you, he's embracing the whole culture. But every, every every time I tell someone that I'm from Texas, yeah. they assume that everyone dresses like this, and that's a problem. Uh -huh. I don't even own a damn pair of cowboy boots. No? That's not what Texas is about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hey, and Perk's going to be in San Antonio this yeah. weekend, right? A, yeah, yeah, basketball? I, yeah, I'm be if you want to get an autograph, a picture, where's the gym to go over and meet you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we knew it was coming, and yet there was still something special about it last night. Wimbanyama is the first number one overall pick since 2006 who did not attend a college in the U.S. The sixth overall, you see the mixed bag of, of some of the previous, uh, and, and obviously, you have some uh, who came right from high school, including LeBron James and Dwight Howard, who will both wind up in the Hall of Fame, et cetera, et cetera. And, and before we move on to what we were, we were in the meeting this morning, we were trying to figure out what can we say about Victor Wembanyama that we haven't been saying mm -hmm. for a year because there was nothing surprising, obviously, in what happened last night. And yet you just said to me, you've been covering the draft as long as anyone can remember, and it was a different night last night. It was electric. It really was electric in the building. Uh, it's not just... Wembenyama's size and his stature, there's a spirit about him, there's a, uh, an energy around him that just, it, it isn't just his physical stature in the room that you feel. He walks in as a superstar. We don't get a lot of that in the NBA now because players come in so young and all the way. He walks in the door as a legitimate superstar, at least in terms of global acclaim. Yeah, and listen, he, he very well could be an all-star in his first season mm -hmm. and I've had there's been no shortage of executives who I really respect in the NBA who think he could be the best player at both ends of the floor by his third or fourth year. I feel like asking you just one more question. I know this wasn't planned and I apologize to the control room but just I'm just looking at you Big Perk and I'm, I'm just I'm just you're a man with some girth, right? And so <laughs> I love him. I said, and, and, and you played that way. And right. I just, I mean, I, I look at him. I've never stood next to Victor Wembanyama. Anyone can see how tall he is. I've seen the skills. It's magnificent. I, the one thing that he does not have is he does not have the kind of girth that you. So what is your my, mentality if you're playing against him in his first game? Well, I mean, I got to see him in his first game. And the great thing about it is that, yes, the Spurs were blessed to draft him but he was actually blessed to go to the Spurs. And that matter when you go into a culture like the San Antonio Spurs, because you're gonna put the work in, they have a game plan for you. And guess what? He is so humble and the game has changed. The only, only, person, the only two people he has to worry about is Jokic and Joel Embiid, to be honest with you. But it's, he's a difference maker, Greeny, Greeny, for the simple fact that not only is he a great rim protector on the defensive end, but his ability to cover ground and block shots on the perimeter and anchor defense, he's the only person in the league that could guard a pick and roll and the basket at the same time. Mm. Yeah, and that's not even, like that sounds like the beginning of a joke or the end of a joke, but it actually isn't. Free agency, for all intents and purposes, starts now. So, Bobby, let's do On Your Marks. 
Get set, go. We'll go through some of the biggest questions out there. Let's start with Paul George. What are we expecting? Yeah, he's extension eligible in September for four years, $210 million. I think the big question is, does the Clippers write him a blank check? Um, they're going into a brand new building in 2024-25. I don't think they can afford Paul George to hit free agency next offseason. Let me go then to another one you sent me in a note that I thought was intriguing. What are you thinking about with Sacramento? They're my X factor. All of a sudden, they're my X factor this offseason. They made a deal the night of the draft. They moved off for Sean Holmes money. Could have up to $35 million in cap space, but at the expense of Harrison Barnes and Trey Lyles. Do they renegotiate Demonis Sabonis' contract? Do they even go out? I'd love to see Brooke Lopez there with Sabonis. That would be a fascinating pairing. Sacramento is a team to watch for sure. And then if we start talking about some of the other stars who are out there, what are we expecting with Kyrie Irving? I just think all signs point to Kyrie Irving back in Dallas. I just look at they lost Jalen Brunson last offseason. They can ill afford to lose Kyrie this offseason, especially where the marketplace is. Really, the only team out there with significant cap space is Houston. And that wouldn't make any sense for him at all. uh, And especially for the Rockets, you have to go out and get multiple players, not just one player at $47 million. And look, we all understand how this works. We live sort of in a Lakers-centric world, so let's bury this once and for all. (laughs) Kyrie was sitting, you know, we were all there, you know, and when we were in L.A., they got Kyrie sitting right there on the court. I mean, it feels like that was a conversation that people want to have, but once and for all, there's nothing to that. Yeah, the the Lakers aren't looking to add that third uh, max-level star. To do that, they would have to let Rui Hachimura go. They'd have to let Austin Reeves go. They'd have to gut their roster. Yeah. And the new uh, financial reality of the NBA does not reward teams for adding a third star. Uh, He's not in their plans right now. All right, fair enough. So we take him and move him to the side. Then we thought Chris Paul was going to wind up going to the Lakers or the Clippers, and now he's in Golden State, and it appears there's there's no obvious path for him to wind up back in, and, and the people uh, were attaching him because that's his hometown and all the rest of that. So let's deal in these players here. Kyrie Irving, it's just he's going back to Dallas, and, and I don't, I'm, I'm struggling to figure out what that means. It's him, it's Luca. It was so bad when he got there last year. They went from here down to here. They tanked their way out of the play-in, and oh, by the way, Two teams from the play-in made it to the conference final, and one of them made it to the final. What is the mentality there with Kyrie and Luka together? You know, they'll have a training camp. They'll have free agency to see how they can improve this roster. Um, Currently constituted, I think it's a playoff team. I don't think they'll miss the playoffs again. Uh, Probably not a championship team, but, listen, they they have the ability to see if they can grow that roster, but... uh, like Bobby said, there's really not a pathway financially for Kyrie Irving to play anywhere else next year but Dallas if he wants to be paid like a superstar player. So what does this mean, Legs? I mean, I'm trying to picture these two guys. It was such an intriguing pairing when that deal was made. Uh, and we and look, it, it went about as south as quickly as something can possibly go south. What happens now? Yeah, that's a great question. Look, if he ends up back in Dallas, I I didn't like it at the time they acquired him. I'm not going to like it any better going into next season. I know they didn't get a lot of time (laughs) together to make a definitive conclusion on it, but they are so bad defensively on the perimeter and offensively, I'm not sure that those parts go together because they don't complement each other. What they do is independent of each other on the court, uh, and that's a difficult way to go. The one thing he addressed in, in, in his acquisition was the ability to now have an elite level score when Luca's on the bench. That's been a major problem for them, the way they operate their offense. Uh, but now you answered that. But the, that's not the big question. The question is, what about when they're on the floor together on both ends of the floor? It was fairly disastrous a year ago in a limited sample size. It'll probably be even more disastrous once Kyrie Irving gets paid and is there and gets a little bit more comfortable, and we know how quickly he can also become dissatisfied. So I don't know that there's great leadership there, and I certainly don't like the way that they fit together on the court. What do you say, Perk? But, but why did it work with Jalen Bronson and Luka Doncic? And I thought last year with Kyrie Irving, he did his part uh, when he arrived in Dallas and, had, and put on a Maverick uniform. The guy that we need to be holding accountable is Luka. And if I'm Luka, I need to take a page out of Jokic's book. The one thing that we don't give Jokic enough credit for, what now we do, is that he's in great shape. Not only do he come in the training camp in great shape, but he sustained it over the whole course of the season. Luka didn't. So, Luka didn't hold up his end of the bargain. And it's just, 
I'm just trying to figure out why did it work with Jalen Bronson mm -hmm. and not Kyrie Irving? And it wasn't because of Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving put up the numbers. Yes. They were picking on Luka when it came down to the pick and roll. That was him not being able to slide those puppies. So when it comes down to it, I think Jay Kidd, he's got to come in the training camp. He got to challenge Luka again like he's half time and time again. And it's on Luka to elevate his game. Look. The Mavs go out and get you a superstar caliber player in Kyrie Irving. Damn it, you got to do your part. And then the other thing I'm disappointed you didn't bring up in there is because every time I ask about a player, you always have them going to the Lakers. So if we have buried, if we have buried Chris Paul to the Lakers, yeah. if we have buried Kyrie Irving to the Lakers, what is there anything your buddy LeBron can do to get that team over back over the the, the Mount Jokic hump but, that but they're staring at? It's not, it's not, it's not on LeBron. I, but for, it's I, on, it's on Anthony Davis. Uh huh. It's on Anthony Davis. And I know, I think, what, he's eligible for a contract extension. Mm -hmm. If I'm the Lakers, I'm not giving him that. I'm not giving him that. He has to earn it. Like, he has to go out there and show on a consistent basis that I can hand you the keys to this car and trust you. And right now, yes, he had a great part of the second half of the season, but he wasn't available for majority of the season. AD has to take over this team. And if I'm the Lakers, man, I, I just... Don't see myself giving him. What do you think of it, Bobby? What, 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 what can they do? We, we've talked so much about things that we'd like them to do that they can't. What can they do? I think they're going to run it back. I think they're going to re-sign Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura, and I think they'll figure out what they do with their non-tax mid-level at 12-4, whether it be a player like Dennis Schroeder. I think you guarantee the contract of Van Jared Vanderbilt. What does Mohamed Bamba and, and Malik Beasley get you in the next 10 days? They have um, some guaranteed dates here, but I'm looking at them for – basically running it back. I liked what they did in the draft last night, getting two players that can come in and, and, and you know, help them um, help them right now. Um, but I don't see a magic wand out there that all of a sudden, as Woj hit, you're not going out getting a third superstar based on how this collective bargaining agreement is. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.